Thursday, August 18th, 2022, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at uh, why there's only one very simple way to solve inflation. And uh, the Bank of England, of course, is coming in line of fire here, as the FT says, over the UK's double digit inflation but it's very simple there's only one simple way really to eliminate inflation and we're going to look at that today we're going to go back in history uh, to prove to you how it can be done and of course i would say a lot of times the most uh, intractable problems uh, can only be solved uh, in an easy fashion, in a very simple fashion. It's, it's the old axiom of uh, Occam's razor. Before I start though, I'd like to make a couple of announcements. The first one is uh, to thank you again for your interest in the channel. The channel continues to grow steadily. We're approaching 70,000. So if you enjoy uh, my videos but haven't subscribed, make sure you do. The other one is over the years, a lot of uh, you have asked me where they can buy gold and silver. And uh, I've provided uh, two affiliates for that here in the UK and also uh, abroad uh, with one of the affiliates. So the first one is Gold Investments. Uh, my promo code with them is Maneco64. They've been in business since 1981, family run business. You can get all your uh, supply of uh, coins, bars, uh, whatever you want, and you'll get a personalized service. The other one is more geared towards the tech uh, tech aspect of getting gold, and that's through Glint. Glint has been around for about four or five years, I would say, and they provide you a, an app and uh, also a MasterCard with which you can spend your gold, and they store your physical gold in a vault in Switzerland in an allocated account. Uh, the uh, referral code there is Mario uh, Glint 79. Back to inflation. Yes, we're seeing a, a lot of uh, debate about inflation and it's not surprising because we're seeing prices rise very, uh, very fast, very quickly. Uh, the, the CPI in the UK has come out above 10%. The RPI, which used to be the measure prior to uh, the late 90s, that's uh, almost at 13%. And I think uh, the Bank of England is forecasting the CPI to go to even 13%. And I wouldn't be surprised if it goes higher. And I referred to this uh, article earlier in the FT uh, about the Bank of England, how they're coming in line of fire over the double digit inflation. So we'll quickly go through it uh, because I, I think it's disingenuous for politicians to, to, to blame the Bank of England and I'm not defending the Bank of England. Um, I'm sure they're okay uh, in 2020 when they had to borrow uh, a fifth of the UK economy that the Bank of England uh, did their massive QE and kept rates at zero. They wouldn't have, uh, the politicians wouldn't have been able to implement their uh, lockdown and their uh, wild schemes of paying people to stay at home if the Bank of England uh, hadn't helped. Maybe uh, they could have started raising rates earlier and uh, paring back the QE. But I'm sure that would have wouldn't have helped the government either and the economy. Seeing that uh, the government uh, or the size of government has gotten so big, it's more than fifty percent of GDP government spending. So, for politicians to come out and uh, have a go at the Bank of England is, uh, yeah, it 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 it, it like. Uh, takes away the spotlight from the real problem. And, and that's what we're going to look at today. And I said we're going to go back historically. And uh, I always like to look back at history because you can learn a lot from history. So we're going to go back to uh, 1797 and we're going to look at the uh, Bank Restriction Act of 1797. And after we go through that, 
We're going to look at the Bank of England uh, inflation calculator. Yes, it's a good tool, despite the fact that they've been tinkering uh, with it. So the Bank Restriction Act 1797 was an act of parliament of Great Britain, which removed the requirement for the Bank of England to convert banknotes into gold. The period lasted until 1821 when convertibility was restored. The period between these two dates is known as the restriction period. Let's go through the reasons why they restricted and, and that's very important so we can understand what inflation and rising prices really are. An increasing number of people were trading their banknotes for gold due to the overprinting of banknotes, QE. <laughs> uh, the Bank of England was losing its supply of gold and due to the gold standard, the value of each banknote was diminishing. So what happens when the currency or the banknotes diminish in value? Well, you buy less. That's the, the, the classical definition of inflation. Uh, goods and services become, uh, yeah, more expensive. The timing of the act, which had been under consideration for a few months, owing to runs on, on banks in Newcastle upon Tyne, Sunderland and Durham, that had in turn requested monetary support from the Bank of England, was the invasion of Britain on 22nd and 24th of February 1797 by French forces in Fishguard. When news of this event, now known as the Battle of Fishguard, uh, became known in London, a much greater run on the Bank of England was feared. Had a large number of holders of banknotes attempted to convert them into gold when bullion reserves were heavily reduced. However, because the total face value of the notes in circulation was almost exactly twice the actual gold reserves held, this would have bankrupted the Bank of England uh, and Parliament decided to suspend these specie payments, specie, that's payment in uh, gold or even in silver sometimes, with immediate effect. This suspension was renewed annually until 1821. So there you go, 1821. Keep that in mind. So with that, let's look at the Bank of England inflation calculator. And it goes back, I think, to 1209. So you can use it as a very good tool, I would say. So I've taken the period here in the inflation calculator uh, from 1797, when the restriction period started, to 1821, when they ended the restriction period and went back, went back on, uh, on the gold standard. And you can see that during those 24 years, Inflation average 0.6% a year, which uh, seems really good uh, for uh, con considering that right now we have 10% inflation or CPI. But uh, I would say that the most important period to look at is the period from 1821 to 1914. And why 1914? Well, that was the last year really in which... Uh, this country, England or the UK, was under a legitimate gold standard. Yes, we went back in 20, 1926 or 25, not sure exactly which year, and we had to get out of it in a few years' time in 1931, mainly because we still had, the Bank of England still had too many liabilities uh, in relationship to its gold holdings. But uh, if you look at the the period from 1821 to 1914, the uh, inflation uh, average minus 0.1 a year. So basically, the pound in your pocket, so to speak, increased in purchasing power. And this, of course, is proven by the, this, uh, the, the answer to the question here in the calculator, what would goods and services costing a pound in 1821 cost in 1914? Well, they would cost less. They would only cost 95 pence. As I said in the beginning of this uh, video, it's very simple to solve 
the inflation problem, uh, the uh, currency debasement problem, and that's to limit the issuance of currency and credit. And that's what the gold standard uh, uh, did uh, throughout that period. And unfortunately, we've been uh, for too long under a restriction period where uh, the Bank of England can just uh, create as much currency and credit out of thin air uh, that it wants because there's no anchor to the, the system. And that's why the currency becomes worth less, as, as we talked about earlier, uh, back in uh, when we read about the Restriction Act. And, and that's what inflation is all about. So it's very simple. So why, why don't the, uh, the politicians and the general public want a gold standard well because it's been uh, demonized it's been uh, blamed upon for the great depression which is totally uh, twisted really i would say uh, the reason the the gold standard uh, had to be abandoned is because uh, government and the, the bank of england uh, abused uh, abused the system they over issued and uh, what they should have done in 1925 26 is retired a lot of the debt or revalued the price of gold to keep the system balanced. And, and it is possible to do. Britain uh, in the 19th century, I don't have to tell you, was the most powerful uh, empire in the world. <laughs> and we, we did it through a, a gold standard. So, yeah, very simple. And... Uh, all the debate that's happening, blaming Andrew Bailey and so on and so forth, that's not going to help. The real problem really is that we need to go back on a sound money footing. And I would add that uh, silver also should be part of the, the system. We should have like a, a bimetallic uh, system. It adds to liquidity. And silver really is the everyday currency that, that uh, people use. Gold is more for savings and for bigger transactions. So with that, let's quickly look at where uh, the markets are this morning. It's uh, quarter to 9 a.m. London time. Uh, we've got spot gold uh, virtually unchanged at uh, 1762. High has been 68, a low 60. Silver still under pressure here. We're down uh, 14 cents, 1963. Low has been 59, high 87. To the stock market, the Dow futures is down 65, NASDAQ uh, 100 futures is down 50, and the S&P is down 12. FTSE 100 index is uh, down a point, so virtually unchanged, just below 7,500. Year of stocks 50 is up four at 37.57. To the currencies, uh, sterling is down uh, 0.2 at 120.25. Uh, the euro is down 0.2 as well at 101.58. Uh, the dollar is up slightly versus the yen, 135.30. Uh, dollar is up uh, 0.2 versus the Swiss franc, 95.34. And the dollar is up 0.2 versus the U1 at 680. Dollar is coming off here a little bit against the, uh, the ruble. We're below... Uh, 60 or just around 60 is down about half a percent the dollar versus the ruble uh, uh, Aussie dollar is down a quarter of a percent 69.17 and, and the dollar is up uh, 0.2 versus the the Canadian dollar 129.30 and the Kiwi dollar is down half a percent at 62.55 to the general commodities uh, WTI crude is down a quarter of a percent 87.50 uh, Brent is uh, down uh, about a tenth at 93.10. High-grade copper is down half a percent at 356. U.S. nat gas is up half a percent at 927. The uh, TTF European uh, nat gas that's uh, up two percent. We're at uh, 230, so still elevated uh, near all time highs. To finish off, let's look at the uh, 10 year yield and the, the yield curve in the US. 
uh, we've got the two year uh, at uh, 330. Uh, I think we got up to 337 yesterday. The minutes of the uh, previous uh, FOMC meeting came out. It was very mixed, I would say. <laughs> they're saying one thing, you know, and the other. They really don't know what they're doing and what what's going to happen. Uh, the 10 year is at 290. That's unchanged. So yeah, the uh, the yield curve is still inverted by about 40, 40 basis points. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And uh, with that, I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.